Hello everyone. Today's video from Matt Gradient will all be about the Broadman area classification of the cerebral cortex. Now this video is a part of neuroanatomy series that we'll be putting up on our YouTube channel. The playlist will be updated very very soon and once the playlist will be updated the every description of every video will be updated and will be having a link of the previous video and the next video right so this video is about the broadman area classification of the cerebral hemispheres so this is what actually the uh, cerebral hemispheres look like when e each and every area is labeled right now both of these images are important why because they tell us something now this is which way uh, uh, this is pointed at which way anterior can you make out the temporal lobe the frontal lobe the occipital lobe like this yes and this I mean the second picture right over here is posterior view as if the person is looking away from you towards this way right correct now let's get into the detail sorry so uh, specifically speaking uh, originally the defined and numbered areas of the cerebral cortex the cerebral let me draw the beautiful cerebral cortex okay so this is quite fat it should not be such flat either yes this looks good now the total number of the areas that are divided in this part of the brain is just 52 right but in this 52 regions all the 52 regions are not very important for the exam point of view so out of these 52 we seclude only 15 areas right and we forget all the uh, all the rest of them i mean we not technically forget about them we learn them but we just make sure that 52 uh, is not the important number 15 is the important number so now when you have any brain given to you in your hands the first thing that we always teach you at my gradient is that you have to orient yourself right so how do you orient now when you have uh, a superior view of the brain uh, the cerebral hemispheres uh, so you always see that it's uh, somewhat like this the two hemispheres right or somewhat like this Now, what is this over here? This is called the longitudinal fissure, right? So, the next thing that you have to know is the central sulcus. The students who have um, attended our workshops here in Ternopil are probably knowing this because in the workshop of the brain, you saw it on a real brain specimen. How do, how do they look? So the longitudinal pressure and the central sulcus are the two main landmarks that help you to know the brain. Now, if we start from these two landmarks, now if we have the lateral section as we are seeing the lateral section over here, um, the longitudinal fissure is not seen, but the central sulcus probably would exist over here, somewhere over here. Right? or a bit more posterior let's say over here yes the perfect location now everything in front of this whole this area is the frontal lobe this lobe is parietal right this part would be occipital lobe and this is our temporal lobe. now why am I separating them because everything over here is motor in function everything over here 
is sensory in function but except uh, it, this does not sense the information uh, of uh, vision of hearing and stuff so you've got um, visual cortex over here you've got auditory cortex over here and then you have uh, the center of olfaction towards the medial side uh, and all that stuff like uh, the uncos and stuff like that so you need to understand that everything below uh, i mean in front of the central gyrus would be uh, motor and everything behind would be sensory now how are these areas defined right how are these areas defined so we know that there are 52 areas right let me write it properly 52 areas and uh, each of them is different by or defined by its cyto architecture cyto architecture now cyto and architecture are two different words cyto means cell and architecture means architecture right so the architecture of the cell that means the histological structure and the cellular organization of these structures make them identify different and distinct regions now i told you out of the 52 we will just be discussing 15 now let's look at a beautiful picture on how these are divided so this is a very colorful picture but before uh, you know knowing all this we need to understand that it was specifically observed that these areas were organized in distinct groups once the cells of these areas were stained using the Nissels method now in this Nissels method it consists of basic dyes let's say notably staining the rough endoplasmic reticulum also known as the nissel substance which is somewhat dark blue in color so many of these areas of distinct neuronal organizations have then been correlated to various cortical functions now the functions of the cortex we will discuss in a later video but at this stage you have to understand the distinct neuronal organization have then been correlated to various cortical functions that i am stressing here right now since then 52 distinct regions are known but you know just 15 major regions we will further elaborate in this video and uh, we'll make sure that the list of all the areas that can be defined that is the list of all the 52 and the function of all those 52 will be attached in the description as a point of reference now what are the areas that we'll be discussing today areas that i will be discussing today will be we'll start from area number one two three we go for four five six then we directly jump to nine and then we have ten and then we go from 17 22 37 then we go to one x area and broca's area okay let's quickly know where they are first one two three very easy i told you that there is one central sulcus just behind that sulcus area number one area number two and area number three that's over here right area number four is just adjacent to it now area number one two three it's called as the primary somatosensory cortex primary somatosensory area right now area number four is called as primary motor cortex the motor area right now let's see where is um i'm not i'll not color things much because it makes uh, the next things being difficult so we discussed about this part now let's go about area number five we discussed four then we come to five now area number five is of course sensory but it is called as somatosensory association cortex it is not primary uh, somatosensory cortex but it is associative cortex which helps the primary the primary is one two three similarly similarly what is it the other side just next to four it's area number six so area number six is premotor of course premotor and supplementary motor cortex that aids the function of area number four right after six we've got area number nine which is in the frontal part so anatomically it is dorsolateral 
or anterior prefrontal cortex now this has a function of motor planning and organization but just look at the area just over here it is area number 10 now this also has anatomically the same description of being anterior prefrontal cortex but this has a function of memory retrieval area number 10 is important for memory make a note of this now when anyone has a accident and the forehead you know the forehead the forehead is affected this part right? this part is affected so you have to know that the part of the brain that comes here then of course you have temporal lobe and then the whole brain but the part of the brain that comes over here is what we are talking about now that is the area number 10 the anterior prefrontal cortex now let's speak about area number 17 going posterior area number 17 is visual cortex similarly area number 22 we've got primary auditory cortex now after discussing these areas uh, let's discuss one long area it's called as occipital temporal gyrus occipital temporal gyrus now, it is a cortex but why is it called gyrus because just look at this let me clear it up it starts from here right it's lateral view but it comes over here also it's median view so it's more sort of a gyrus it's cortex but more sort of a gyrus so we call it as occipital temporal gyrus then after we are done with this uh, i'm sorry uh, we remain with two important areas it's called as the Wernicke's area and the Broca's area now both of them are related to speech but they are different let's say how when a person speaks right when a person speaks there are two components of the speech one uh, the motor component now the motor component or the mechanical component right how uh, the twisting of the tongue what sounds to make how loud to speak how soft to speak and all that stuff now the second part is your sensation like when you are speaking sometimes you may realize that you suddenly uh, know what you are speaking or you suddenly re start recognizing that you are speaking something and you pick up the sensation from that speech so that has to be sensory part now sensory part of the speech right the sensory part of the speech now um, at this moment i want you to understand that something which is motor should lie in this area right and something which is sensory should lie somewhere here right so this is how it works the Broca's area which is responsible for motor area or the motor speech area or the it's called as the motor speech area it is located over area number 44 and 45 over here and the language compartment or the language area where it is quite to be sensory is over here area number 22 39 and 40 at 22 39 and 40 so this area is for language comprehension and this is called as the vernix area so this is broca's area b r o c a s and this is vernix area vernix area i hope this video has been helpful we have discussed around 15 areas and their function starting from the area number one two three being primary somatosensory cortex and we have finished Broca's and Wernicke's area in the end so I hope this video is helpful and I wish you all the best for your studies thank you very much